big, big news. Tua won't be in this week. I, I, I really expected it. Somebody in the comments section said that uh, Tua's father made a deal with the team that he would retire if he wasn't kind of uh, allowed not to play at all the rest of the season, come back next season. He said something about a specially fitted helmet. I don't know if that's true or not. Uh, it sounds pretty smart and, and likely right. I don't think we're going to see this kid, whatever happens, unless maybe it's like a Super Bowl or something. So, two is not going to be, and I'm going to get into that. And I'm also going to get into some real smart comments. I, for me, I'm a writer. This video gig, don't like it. Don't like it. I like to write. And, and, and have personal conversations. But what I love the most, what I love the most is the comments section. I learned so much. There's guys that play big time bowl that actually show up and they throw their two cents. And I've seen some coaches. I've seen very smart people with great concepts, great ideas, great retorts to what I've said. Information, especially when I screw up the title. Dude, you screwed up the title. I love those comments. That really makes me feel good when I... I can get out of a screw up because somebody helps me out. But comments mean so much. And it was a com two comments. Uh, I don't know if they saw one and then we we uh, reapplied it in another version to try to get the answer. They both had the same ideas or whatever. But basically, it was we ran for 150 yards, but you're saying Eichenberg sucked. So who cares? Well, I want to dig into the understanding of that question as well as some other comment, uh, concepts around offense versus defense. Because I'm a huge Lauren Hill fan. She was the big thing back in my day when I was 20. And I, I did my suit hustle last year and I used a song. I, I just love Lauren Hill so much for so many reasons. And one of the things is everything is everything is from a uh, miseducation of Lauren Hill. And, you know, in the song, the concept of the song, and, and sometimes in life, you know, even history and stuff like that, you could say, yeah. But in understanding the NFL, everything is not everything. So I'm going to dig into that as well. So Tua, uh, everything is not everything, if you understand me, and understanding offense versus defense and how we can have sucky Eichenberg play and still get 150 yards on the ground. So that's that. Anyway, Curtis saying thanks uh, for stopping by. I appreciate it all the time. You know, everything you guys do, again, especially the comments. So I want to give you a shout out. Shout out to Ace Per Head, my sponsor, because without you, without them, this show ain't going down. Ace Per Head's betting software is the premier white label platform for bookies to manage their players and grow their sportsbook operation. Click the link in the description below to get set up in minutes. Ask for the Curtis promo and get a special introductory discount. Okay, first I'm going to get into Tua. Uh, I, I'm happy. I like the kid. Uh, you know, I mean, what's really not to like? You know, really not to like? You might disagree or say he could be better than whatever. I think the kid's health is paramount. I've talked in the past. <laughs> I've had my melon rock quite a few times, playing football, doing stunts, getting into fights, and I struggle uh, with some of that stuff these days, minor level though. But, you know, you look at some of these kids committing suicide in their 30s, mentally degenerating in their 30s, you know, even look at some of the older ones, this is the real deal, this is terror, this is terror of the highest order. I, uh, I met... Charlton Heston, as a kid, uh, my mother worked in a place, and I got to meet him, and it was an unbelievable event for me. I still remember it. I was only about four or five, and I can remember it like crystal clear just about. And so I always had an affinity with him, and watching his last interview as he was degenerating mentally and having my idolization of this guy, it always put terror in me to get your melon rocked. And have this degenerative process, and I don't wish it on, well, a few people I wish it on, but very, very few. But most people, it's a terror. So I'm happy this kid is not going to play this week. Likely not for the postseason. I don't, I don't think we're going to get past the Bills. Anything's possible. That's exciting. But realistically speaking, we're going to go in here and probably have tough times because I, I don't know who else is going to be playing as far as the offensive line. If that offensive line is 
not good. It's not going to really matter for whether Tua comes back next week or whatever. But he's not coming back, and that's good news. It'll be interesting to see how this thing plays out and see if that information I got was correct. So we've got to just move on to Skyler. And again, I say this, Skyler came out of this game beaten up. Teddy's finger is messed up. He's still working on throwing more than 15 yards. So it's Skyler who's coming in already beat up, who was really beat up in the last Jets game. And I'm hoping that this kid can survive this game because you never know what can happen, how it can affect the psyche, how it can affect the body. And we don't really do a good job here uh, almost ever of taking care of our quarterback. So I hope this kid is safe. And I'm also happy not for Tua coming in now. Going to get into the question part now, which is, you know, Curtis, man, you're complaining about this Eichenberg, you do this Eichenberg guy, and then we roll out 150 on the Jets. So we won. Well, you could just say that, and yeah, it's correct, but what's the circumstances? What's the context? Understanding, I I did a whole dig of my own stats because I found it a fascinating question I mean, intuitively, I understood, but in order to express it, it took some research on my part, and I, I thank you guys for that. Uh, I'm going to put the comments uh, up here because that was really good stuff. So, we put 150 on him. My internet went down. I can't figure out how much the Jets allow per game. Uh, I'll, I'll, maybe I'll try to post up there. But we went about probably about 30, 40, 30 or 40 yards over what they generally give up. They're about 15th ranked defense. But we have to understand that defense, first of all, they are a primarily pass defense and pass rush defense. So if you look at their linebackers to start off, you can look at a linebacker and look at the PFF grade and go, oh yeah, but it matters the size. The composition of the linebacking core means something. You got guys in the 250, 260 range, unless they're like Erlacher, they probably can't cover. And the same token, you got guys in the 220 range, kind of like Zach, even though they say he was bigger than that, but he probably like 220, 225. They probably can't run stop. And the Jets have a smallish, almost nickel esque uh, linebacking group. And so, in essence, they were playing the pass. For a quick summary, and I'm going to dig in. And they had a nickel on the ground all day for the most part. Now, um, if you remember last year, I, I, not many people were talking about it, but I, we got beat um, by the Titans. Was it last year or the year before? Ah, I can't remember. The, yeah, it was last year. We got beat by the Titans in that clutch game, and it was all, you know, to a, to a, to a, to a. And you could see we ran the ball very effectively. They played nickel all day on a rain-swept field, but we could not run it out of them, uh, even though we were in 12 personnel, which is two tight ends for most of the day, and they were in a nickel. But what happened was we would get a big run, and people would go, look, we can run the football. And then on that second down or the third and short, they would either A, run blitz, or maybe occasionally bring in the fourth rate. And so it was a bad environment for the pass game. And so while we look good running the football, you pop eight, you pop nine, you pop ten, that second down was usually a dud. And so when it comes to defenses approaching an offense, you can't stop everything. You can have a great offensive, uh, defensive pass uh, unit, a great uh, defensive run unit, but the field's so big that that defensive coordinator has got to dial in on some players on a pass or run usually. And so because we have Hill and Waddle who create leverage, and by leverage I mean everybody is like, I'm afraid to get beat over the top because it's not about yards. Ben Bird don't break. Remember our 70s defense. It's about points. So you got Hill and Waddle out there. You're a defensive coordinator. You're like, well – I got to stop the quick points. I've got a really strong pass defense with two uh, um, coverage corners and a pretty solid safety. We're going to focus on stopping the pass. And so they kind of allowed us to run, 
but pulled in the reins here and there. And those runs didn't really lead to much. Now I'll go to the stats to let you understand. So we had we had 152 passing on the day with 4.9 per pass. That's terrible. So the number one asset of this team was curtailed. And that was probably the key to their game. Now Waddle had five for 44 with 8.8. Terrible. Hill, he had two for 23. You know that they're, they're like, we gotta stop uh Batman and Robin. And we used to stop Batman. They stopped Batman. They stopped Robin. And so you can allow those runs. Now, it depends on when those runs kick off, how those runs kick off. Just a quick example. You could have 130 yards on a day for a team. And be like, wow, that's great. And you could have an 85-yard run, and you carried the ball 25 times. So you had one big pop run, and the rest of them were for nothing. Bupkis. So there's so much that goes involved. Everything is not everything when you just look at blanket stats. So, we had two 15-plus yard runs. We had six 10-plus yard runs. So, just on the face of it, that's 85 yards of our run in eight plays out of the 150, which was probably way more than that. So, yeah, it felt good. You're like, oh, but what happens in the underneath? Now, they had 10 missed tackles during those runs. And so it wasn't all blocking. It had to do with some missed tackles. It had to do with some running backs making some real nice plays. And we ran 14 zone and 12 gap runs. Now zone and gap, it can get a little confusing, but essentially zone is you block a guy in a zone. Gap is you flood an area so you have more blockers and you can blow somebody out. That's where you get the pulls and all that stuff. Now if you run gap, against a small linebacking core, then you have a tendency to get hat on hat of a 300-pound guy uh, or a 280-pound guy versus a 220 when you got a small linebacking core. And that can give you that breakout run, which we saw a lot of these here. I didn't go into the stats, how many gap runs we got, which were successful or not. I'd be pretty fun. I'd like to do it, but I didn't have the time. So now we had yards after contact, 94. Five. So out of the 155 or 150 we had, 55 was generated before contact. We had some big runs again that goes to the missed tackle. Now, first down, we had six wins, which was about two and a half yards to three. I'd say three yards. I, I marked that three to four yards plus, and then anything under that. I consider a failure. So we had six wins on first down, nine failures on first down. And some of, some of those failures were negative plays or stop for nothing. Didn't get into that stats. Second down, we were 50-50, seven wins, seven losses. Third down, one and one, so 50-50 again. Fourth down, we had the nice run. And then we had two drives that were three passes and out. So the drive ended with three consecutive passes. Now, when you wrap this all up, we had some very big plays. None of them popped for scores. We weren't able to pass because they were curtailing the pass. We weren't as successful as we'd want on first down because you're sub 50%. You're around 40-something percent, which puts you off schedule. And when you tie it out to the failures in the pass defense, that put us off schedule on third down and eliminated the successful run game and put us into our struggling uh, op, uh, option, which was the pass game. And this is why we ended up only with nine points. Now, I showed in my last film that one big play we had, there was two obvious holding calls that should have been called, they didn't. And that was like a 20-yard play right there and a first down. So when you pull it all together, they said, okay, destroy us with the run. Let's see what happens. And if we pop a run, they're going to come in and then try to make it hard on that critical down, and we did not win enough. And clearly, we did not win enough in the passing game. Now, if you go check Eichenberg's play, it was terrible. And this is why it goes back to my original point. If you had Jones in there to start, you could have had some 
bigger plays, some more successes, and it might have turned the tide to where this run attack runs them out of their coverage. They only blitzed us a couple of times. They were very successful when they did. But most of the time, they were just rushing four and dropping seven. This is why it was so critical to have Jones in there because if you could have been more successful, then it changes the perspective of the defensive coordinator. He calls different coverages. He calls different defenses. And then that allows the run game to blow it open and to dominate. But we didn't. We couldn't. We still won, but there was major complications within this because Eichenberg failed so much. Small example, go back, there was about six or seven doubles where Eichenberg was involved that he got stonewalled and he couldn't even move the defensive lineman more than a yard off the ball. Let me tell you, if Jones was in there, that would not be. We also had to marry... Uh, Eichenberg way too much with the double. Well, because Little is terrible. He's he gives Little in the run game. <laughs> and Little offered with Mr. Eichenberg. And so you were literally taking two guys and they weren't even equal in one guy. And so that was a problem. Jones, he's got some issues, but he is a one plus guy in the run game. So there you have it. That's that. I'm going to dig into the tape after this. I got some Phillips stuff, Sealer stuff, Wilkins stuff. These guys are highly exciting players. I mean, this is so... Sealer had the fifth most tackles of a defensive lineman. And Wilkins had number one, most in the history of the Dolphins. And the most in the NFL since 1994. And Phillips was special on the day. And sometimes if you don't see the sacks, you don't notice that. So I'm going to get that film to you, plus some other stuff. Uh, so I hope you enjoyed. It's a little complication maybe, but I think you'll probably understand. So that's that. Thanks for the uh, questions. Uh, big game coming up, guys. Catch you next time. Be well. Go Finn. Start building your own online sports book today by getting signed up with acebred.com service that allow you to book action on sports from all around the world.